Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. In this video we'll be utilising Unreal and an iPad Pro to create a virtual camera. Now this isn't going to be a virtual camera in the professional sense, but it's a kind of way of playing about with the idea of moving your tablet around and being able to control the camera in your scene in near real time. So we just have this example scene here set up and we've got the uh, Paragon character phase just in there just to give us a bit of a kind of visual uh, marker almost to work with. But in order to be able to do this there's a few things we're going to need to do to be able to get both our tablet and our computer communicating to each other. Now I'll be doing this on Windows and I'm using version 4.24 of Unreal. Uh, however, this will work on versions from 4.22 onwards, um, but you will need an iPad Pro for this methodology to work. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to enable our projects plugin for uh, this to work. So I'm going to go to the, oh, let me just come out of the preview window. I'm going to go to settings, uh, plugins, and we need to go to scroll down to where it says virtual production here. And we're going to want to enable the virtual camera option. So you can see at the moment this is in beta. I'm just going to enable that. Uh, Plug-in version beta may be unstable but we will remove notice. Please review caution. Uh, I accept. And it'll ask me to restart my project, which I will do now. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've restarted my project and my virtual camera is now enabled. You'll also find that the virtual production utilities and take recorder tend to be enabled as well. A few other things we need to check that also should be enabled by doing this is we need to go to scroll up here to where it says augmented reality. We just need to, uh, where possible, enable the Apple AR kit. So I'm just going to enable that. And then I'm going to go to experimental and I'm going to also enable a remote session and I'm just going to again restart my project and we'll be back in a second once it's restarted. Okay so now we've everything enabled and everything turned on I can now just close this and there's now a few little extra steps we're going to need to do. So I'm going to now need to head over to my iOS device and I'm going to need to download the Unreal Remote 2 application onto my device. Once this is downloaded, and bear in mind this only at the moment works on iPad Pros with uh, DevCenter and ARKit uh, latest versions in it, um, installed, we're going to need to get the IP address of our remote server, aka our copy of Unreal. So to do that, we, depending on which computer you're using, there are two methods. So if we're using a Mac, we would open up Terminal and type in ifconfig. And from there, we'll be able to get the IP address and paste that into the uh, application on your tablet. And then press connect. And then once uh, we play, we'll be able to see it. Uh, but what we're going to do, because we're working on Windows, is we're going to need to use command prompt. So I'm just going to open up command prompt. I won't show you my IP address so that will be blurred. And I type in IP config and I hit enter. And I'm looking for my IPv4 address. Once I have that, I just simply need to type that into my tablet. So I'm just going to do that now. So now I've connected my IP address into my tablet. Uh, making sure that my tablet and my computer are both on the same Wi-Fi connection when I'm doing this. Uh, I just need to go back into Unreal and do a few extra little bits and bobs uh, to get the camera tracking. So I need to go to Settings, World Settings, which will bring up our World Settings window. I need to go to Game Mode and change this to be our Virtual Camera Game Mode. Like so. And this will now mean that the camera that we use on our scene will be the camera that will be displayed on our tablet. Uh, at the moment, the um, Unreal World, uh, 
if we suppress play, this wouldn't connect to the tablet. There's a few extra things we need to do. And this does involve a little bit of um, editing of the default engine uh, script. So this is where things can get a little bit scary. Um, but don't worry, I'll try and guide you through this. So we want to navigate to where our project is saved. So within our project uh, saved location, we want to go to config and we want to open up the default engine.inei file. And I'm just going to open this up in uh, Notepad. So this here is the uh, kind of settings that it's running off for our project. Um, but we're going to need to add in a little bit of extra script just to say that we want this to be connected via a remote session. So we need to type in uh, remote session plus channels equals uh, equals um, open bracket name equals f remote session frame buffer channel comma mode equals right close and then plus channels equals name equals f remote session input channel comma mode equals read close and then finally plus channels equals open name equals f remote session xrt racking channel comma mode equals read close so you should have this a little addition made to your file I then press file save and then I can close that and then I'm going to go to edit project settings and scroll down to where it says input I want to enable the touch interface just so I can kind of move around if I wanted to. And I can close that. And then I go to edit. Edit to preferences. Play. And do a level editor. And I'm going to choose my viewport resolution to be a tablet. And in my case, I'm using the iPad Pro 11. So I'll set it to be that. And now I can close that as well. And I should be able to press play. And I want to play this in a new editor window. Like so. And we should be able to see this now on my tablet. So you won't be able to see this yet, but as I'm moving my tablet around, you can see on the screen, I have this uh, like virtual camera. So I can, uh, on the tablet itself, I've got this UI, so I can actually adjust things like the focal length. So I can zoom out. I can adjust my focus. Just by swiping on the screen. I can adjust my f-stops. And again, this is basically large, trying to emulate what you'd find on a standard camera. I can also move my camera using the joystick controls. So, because uh, with this camera tracking on a tablet, you can't actually, it doesn't track your 
uh, z depth so you can't so let's say i worked forwards or backwards left or right it wouldn't track that it's just literally tracking the orientation of which i'm moving my camera around the x and y axis around a pivot point so if i wanted to move around um i would need to use the joystick if i wasn't uh, if i was using this approach like so you can also use auto to try and auto adjust I can record my screen on my tablet, so I can press the little record button in the bottom corner, and then I can record my performance. So I could, using the joystick and orientating my camera around, start to move my camera around the subject, like so. Then to stop recording, I can just press the record button again, and then that will save that video file. And if I want to hide the UI, I'll just press the little eye icon in the top corner. And I can go to settings, which is with a little gear at the top, and I can adjust the stabilization. So I can make my stabilize a more advanced, so I can adjust things like the track, the dolly, the boom. Uh, same with the stabilized rotation. I can change the input source, whether it's playing back in time code or frames, the file format. So at the moment it's using the film format of an ARRI Alexa, but I could change that to be an IMAX 70 Emma, a Red Dragon, etc. You can adjust the mat, the opacity, the focus, the, uh, the sort of movement tracking here, the motion scale, where I freeze the view, uh, so I can t freeze it so it I can't move it on one of the axes, for example. I can also adjust the, uh, these controls here, whether I want them visible or not. And then I can just uh, set or save my settings as a preset. Okay, so once we're back into our camera and we've recorded a take, if I ever want to be able to preview my performances, I can just simply click on the performances button at the bottom. I select the take that I've done, so let's say scene one, take one. And if I look over my Unreal window, I will have this uh, sequencer window and take window open. I can then scrub through the sequencer window and on my tablet I'll be able to see that this little scrub bar at the bottom moves and shows me my recording of where of my camera movement in that scene. Like so. So this camera now is basically a track that we've done that we could always uh, move so we could change our scene but this camera we, we recorded on our tablet would keep that movement regardless of any changes that we make to our scene from that point onwards. So just to sort of uh, try and highlight that, I'm just going to see if I can uh, quickly import something in. So let's uh, put in this bench into my scene and see if that uh, plays ball. Uh, it might not because we're currently uh, streaming a simulation, so let me just close that. Pull in the chair. I'm not going to really worry too much about its position at the moment. Just rotate it around. And then hit play again. Oop, there we go. So now we have that chair back in the scene. I go back to my performances, back to my scene. And now I can play through that camera track again. But now that chair is in the scene because I've made a change to the scene. But the camera recording has stayed the same. So as you can see, this just tracks the position of the camera. It doesn't um, record exactly what's on the scene. Uh, if I wanted to record what was being um, recorded within the scene, I could either record it on my tablet. So I could actually uh, record the tablet screen, or I could record it within the Unreal Editor like I would uh, a film, essentially, as an export. So this is uh, just a little view at the remote uh, session option to be able to create a film within Unreal and using an iPad Pro as your virtual camera. Um, this would not, it's not the same as a virtual production that you would use um, sort of using a Vive sensor or a professional grade camera, but this is something that is just a little neat, neat little thing to do uh, if you have an iPad Pro and playing about with Unreal anyway. 
and as you can see I can just move around and it's uh, giving me quite a good feed. This does depend on how good your internet connection is, you will find it sometimes a little bit laggy. Uh, this is mainly built for Windows, so if you are running this on a Mac you will find that it will stutter uh, considerably more. Anyway, hopefully this has been useful and I will see you again soon as we explore Unreal and other software on the Catalyst channel. Goodbye.